And welcome back. And it looks like we're just getting the game started here between Jesse and Nathan. Like, who do you think's favorite in the four color versus scam matchup? I know you talked about it a little bit with Jesse already, but what do you, I, I wasn't there to hear it. So, yeah, we, think? We, I think it's very close. I think that scam players usually think that they're favored. I think four color players usually think that they're favored. I think that there is some nuance between um, main deck and sideboard and mana base considerations from both players that can swing the edge a little bit in either player's favor but ultimately i think whoever wins the die roll i'd rather be on the side of but although i think you have a lot more experience uh on probably both sides of the table than i do so I i'd be curious if you had a different opinion i think it's dead even dead even. ironically yeah it could go right. either way <laughs> the games go very long sometimes or not long at all just depending on how the, the answers line up to the threats very very swingy matchup nonetheless and we see the age-old million-dollar Twitter discourse. You go turn one Ragavan or do you turn one Scam of Fury Spike? I, I think it's very, very close. Um, this hand is, I think, really interesting specifically because you almost want to bait a removal spell on Fury here over Ragavan. Uh, like, if your turn one Ragavan gets solituded or bolted or whatever, then and you're not able to get that third mana from the treasure token to cast blood moon things could go really really problematic um doing it like this almost guarantees that jesse can play a turn three blood moon on the play which you know obviously if if nathan just doesn't have a removal spell for the fury that's great but clearing that removal for the ragaman i think is pretty clear nathan does actually have you know solitude plus fury here so <laughs> that might Nathan's not stacked might not be enough but you know, there's actually there's also a really good chance Nathan just takes the hit from Ragavan and decides to go bean then solitude the Ragavan next turn. But not at all. That, that's the world champion dog in him there. Just no knows Jesse has two main deck blood moons, is not gonna let her get up to three mana that easy. Yeah, I expect him to fetch probably a basic planes before slamming this bean. He yeah. was very cognizant of fetching basics around me, and that's why you actually watched me sideboard out Blood Moon for my game three on the draw, because I was like, I don't think this is going to be good enough anymore. Nathan's, like, too smart, too, like, attentive of a player to not fetch basics against me. I agree, and if the first Fury wasn't enough to get it done, maybe maybe the second one will be. It, it is really one. funny how both players have evoked two cards here, Jesse's down to no cards in hand, but eight, a 4 4 double strike in play. Nathan, three cards still in hand, but nothing that lines up well against the Fury currently. Oh, I'll enter Fury off the top. That's true. I mean, there are a lot of cards that, you know, top deck well here, but this is almost and just a nail in the coffin. Jesse's just out of this game at this point. There's probably very little to draw to to actually make this comeback. We'll probably see her play it out, but I don't know if I had that kind of fight in me. I probably would have packed it in under that the fairy. Yeah, I I think that the one ring might be worth like taking a draw step, seeing if that draw step is Orcish Bowmaster, and then and then packing it in. I agree. I I didn't have that kind of fight in me. Yeah. I would have packed it in as I saw the one ring. <laughs> draw step is Blood Crypt. No concession. All right, Jesse's going to fight it out, which is, you know, something I definitely respect. I always love when, you know, you're on this spectrum of the Reed Duke scale, just really, really relaxed, ready to see if something weird happens, you know, in no rush to to move to the cyborg game. And we see a Renin 6 come down, pick up a land. I mean, this is definitely Nathan's game to lose, right? I, I agree. I mean... You know, the, the four-color deck is, like, sometimes spectacular at flooding out um, in a way that, like, almost no other deck in Modern is. You know, like, sometimes they'll just have seven cards in the hand, but all seven of them are lands. Nathan's build with 23 lands may be a little bit less likely to do that. Um, but I, 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 I think that the, the patience here and, you know, maybe maybe there's just also not an Omnath in the top 40, 50 cards of Nathan's deck. Ends up taking too much damage and dies to a Bowmaster. That's also within the realm of possibility. Yeah, Nathan does have multiple copies of Teferi to bounce the ring and retain protection for several turns in a row as soon as he gets up to the fabled seven mana. Only two lands away. Not too bad. You see the thoughts he's come down here. Probably going to take a concession. <laughs> Just <laughs> take it to the next game. Yeah, I think that that's fair. Um, you know, I honestly feel like that might have been a hand that I might have kept going against. Just there's no Omnath over there. But I, I, I appreciate... 
Jesse's uh, concession for our sake and for all of your sakes watching, just just getting on with it. I, I am really curious to hear your thoughts on cyborg plans in this matchup, Dingo. I know that um, you cyborged in a way that Jesse, I, I think, is good. like Jesse is going to like leave in the Void Walkers here on the play. I th- oh, the, Jesse's on. Yeah, Jesse is going to be on the play. Sorry. Uh, I think Jesse's leaving Void Walkers. You boarded yours out on the play. Do you have any thoughts on on that uh, sideboarding decision? So I board out Void Walker and I leave in Ragavan on the play. But on the draw, I think Ragavan gets a lot worse when it gets pinged by Ren and Six. So I opt to make that swap of Ragavan out on the draw, Dothy Void Walker back in because I don't think Void Walker does too much. Sometimes you can get lucky and snipe a ring with a Thoughtseize. Rakdos doesn't have any way of taking your own ring off the table, so mm-hmm. you kind of become a race against the clock for yourself if you manage to snipe a ring with the Dothi. I don't think it's the best threat in this matchup, but having extra threats in general is never a bad thing. So you think it's more its more about the Ragavan dynamic rather than the Voidwalker dynamic? Yeah, Voidwalker is not bad, but Ragavan can be really bad on yeah. the draw. Yeah, I love to hear uh, that thought process explained. Why, and we see something that doesn't happen that often in modern or that often in this matchup, a Ragavan connecting on turn two. That's why um, we leave it in on the play, right? Like it's yeah. so it can be like very easy to steal a game with Ragavan on the play. But on the drag, it's so difficult. And we see two copies of Renin Six in Jesse or sorry, in Nathan's hand to snipe that Ragavan next turn. So not long for this world. Yeah, thankfully there's a backup Ragavan over there for Jesse. Um I imagine that we're going to see a Thoughtseize cast, hoping to tuck something underneath this Dothy Voidwalker. Do you think it's just like clearly wanting to take a Leyline Binding here? Because that's the only only card here that's not part of a pair and the only card that, you know, helps Nathan stabilize? Or do you think there's an argument for taking the Omnath instead? I think you're just going to take the Binding. Yeah, I think, I think so too. Seems like Jesse doesn't even really think about it too long. I think that that's totally fair. Um I, I agree. We're about to see Ragavan remove the Ragavan from this game. It'll be very interesting what the draw step is for Jesse. If she draws a land, she can go either Ragavan into Voidwalker or can go F- or can go uh, Fable. Pithy Needle is very interesting here. That's a turn too late. If we got the Pithy Needle down last turn, naming Ren and Six, that would have been huge. But yeah, absolutely. Ren and Six is uh, starting to do its damage already. I expect the Dothi to go at Ren and Six, Ragavan to go face, and then maybe casting a Pithy Needle, naming the One Ring or Ren and Six. We'll see if Jesse's got the foresight to name the One Ring because Nathan did actually top deck it. Yeah, I think with the other Ragavan known from the first thoughts he's cast, naming Ren and Six is probably what she'll do and that seems to be seems to be the yep. case i know that jesse was like really really talking about how damage was the most important thing in this matchup and i think that that uh that attitude is reflecting here in her decision to just ignore the rin six completely or at least let the the pithy needle handle it oh that blood moon's gonna be really good here nathan didn't really have an opportunity to fetch out any basics this game especially with that Renin six getting needled here yeah absolutely so if- Jesse makes his treasure token here and casts a Blood Moon next turn. It might be lights out, although the ring is going to buy a little bit of time. Yeah, the ring will buy some time. There will be a basic island over there for Nathan, but of course that's probably the least effective of all the basics you could have. Doesn't cast Blood Besage You or Leyland Binding or uh, um, Prismatic Ending to answer the Blood Moon. Third Omnath. Interesting. Goes for see. the ring instead of uh, instead of an Omnath here. Yeah, it's a little bit more resilient to Fury, Terminate, etc. And you probably don't have Blood Moon on your radar at this point. Yeah, and then you're also probably wanting to go like Omnath plus land as well yeah. for the next turn. So pretty pretty clean turn for Jesse. Cast Blood Moon. Uh, kill Ren and Six. I don't believe that there's anything super handy underneath the Voidwalker. There is a, actually, there's the Leyline Binding. Could 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 potentially see Leyline Binding go on the Blood Moon, but I uh, probably with the Blood Moon and oh, sorry, on the One Ring but with the Blood Moon in play, I think that the Ring might be more of a liability than an asset at this point. Probably we see Nathan take two more draws, and then I mean Nathan is just gonna die to the Ring here. Yeah, I can't cast any spells. Yeah, there's I believe no yeah no legal plays. Knows about the Ragavan. Knows is dead on board. Uh, and we go, we're blazing through, <laughs> blazing through going to match Fast three. matches today. <laughs> I don't know if you tuned into the match, the, 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 the week I played, but we had like, like multiple hour long matches. So this is really, really refreshing that they're going by super fast. Well, Reed was in your pod, right? 
Yeah, Reed was in my pod. The band no win back. condition. Yeah, the no win condition. I got 40 minutes on the clock, and I'm going to use all of them, deck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a classic. Okay, what do you think of Celestial Purge on Jesse's side? Do you think she ever brings that in just to kill a Ren and Six or an Omnath? Or do you think it's just too clunky? Hmm. Let me let me just double check and see if there's any other target besides Rin Six and Omnath. I like I, I think there's a good chance you would want it in over Terminate. Although the problem is, I guess if you cast Blood Moon, you're no, you're no longer able to cast um, Celestial Purge on like on like your Terminates. But there's a good argument that Terminate is mostly in your deck to kill Omnath, and Prismatic or Celestial Purge is a card that also answers Omnath, but can you know clean up a Rin and Six too, which can be another problematic card. Yeah, I think it's kind of close. I might consider bringing in like a single copy over a Terminate, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure I'm too priced into wanting something like that. Yeah. Both players have awkward hands, to say the least. I think I think that you could make... Uh, Jesse's hand is so close. Having double Thoughtseize in this matchup is really, really nice, is on the draw, so she has like a better chance of... Like like in Jesse's spot, any uh, uh, grief, fury, or land all make her hand keepable. She's on the draw. She's like so likely to find one of those in the first two draw steps. This seems like maybe an unintuitive keep. Uh, it looks like she has kept against Nathan, who's mulligan to five. Nathan's seven card hand had two lands, had a red and six, but with Hallowed Fountain, no fetch lands, red and six uncastable, had to send it back. I think in a league match, I would keep Jesse's hand in a match playing for top eight of this modern super league i think i would ship it and not have the guts to keep it because it's a close one <laughs> yeah, i agree that it's one. close do you think that so you know, jesse has information um that nathan is mulliganing to six at least before she makes her decision do you think knowing your opponent's going to six are you more inclined to keep this double thoughts he's hand or just still too too afraid i would be too afraid that's fair i would just play it safe and probably go to six myself yeah, and you know your fear seems to maybe be realized as Jesse does not find second land in time. Um, I imagine Teferi Time Raveler is getting removed from the hand, and then we're kind of going to be in a classic, maybe not mana screw, mana screw versus mana flood situation where Nathan has you know two mana come to Jesse's one, but you know is ahead yeah. on mana. The issue with keeping a non-proactive hand like this with just the two thought seizes <laughs> is that if you're going draw for draw with Nathan, he's going to beat you. Yeah, that, that is a, a well said. And, you know, drew, drew certainly the wrong evoke elemental here. Jesse knows that Nathan's hand is two removal spells. Doesn't know about the third removal spell here. Very difficult yeah. to want to go for the Fury. Looks like she's going to go for it just to remove one more resource from Nathan. Maybe not on second thought. Just might just Yeah, it's, it's it's tough. Like, there's, I don't think, a great answer here. Absolutely. And then Bean was <laughs> Bean is certainly yeah, one of the... One of the best draws Nathan could have had here. Actually, e easily the best draw. Bean coming on down. And you got mana for the Lightning Bolt and the Celestial Purge. Stern the Scolding was the pickup. Not going to be relevant here. Second land for Jesse? No. no. See? This is my fear with keeping these hands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, now still waffling back and forth. You know, Nathan doesn't have enough domain to make Leyland Binding a answer that, that draws a card here. Jesse does have plenty of black cards to like scam a grief if a grief is drawn, has the ability to scam a second fury. It's a, a really, really unenviable position. Yeah, I'm not happy if I'm in Jesse's position right now. Staring down that bean. I mean, the only solace is that Nathan hasn't hit land drops in a couple of turns, yeah. but you yourself are just starved on mana do you, would you evoke fury here I, it's obviously such a like knuckle grinding decision to have to like run three cards it, you're, you're just three for winning her, yourself potentially four for winning yourself if nathan can get domain for leyline binding but you also haven't done anything for three turns you have to get some pressure in play such a it difficult sucks. decision yeah but i think you have to do it because the way you win this game is just tempoing out with Bowmaster at this point. So you kind of have to make way for these Bowmasters to resolve and survive and deal damage off the bean. Mm -hmm. And the uh, domain is you know now up to four, so Leyland Binding costs two. Uh, Nathan can, is wanting to draw the card and keep the ball rolling and also save Celestial Purge for a possible Blood Moon that could come down in like two turns, uh, not this next turn. 
And another undying effect. No second land. Jesse reels back in her chair. Not happy seeing that. Was that the fourth undying effect being picked up here? Yeah, I think so. It feels like so many matches when the red black what you call it deck is involved just live and die on how good the how good the draw is for the, the scam player. One, two, three, pick up the Kahira. Very powerful. Productive turn. <laughs> All right, right on time. What is this turn seven? Can't quite see the uh the turn counter it's turn six. Yeah, it's quite a ways into this game at this point with the one ring well i mean if nathan does not shock in that hollow fountain and deploys the one ring maybe the bowmaster does a little bit of work yeah but i think nathan's gonna take a little bit of time and think this through and then shock the hollow fountain before deploying this ring yeah i think so being able to hold up both uh scolding or lightning bolt seems seems worth the two damage here yep and we're gonna see this bowmaster eat us during scolding probably i would i would think so too uh, you know, there is a backup Bowmaster, but that, that's, you know, also has... Nathan currently has two answers in hand for it and is going to be drawing lots more cards here. And Nathan says, get out of here, you fool of an archer. To the graveyard with ye. <laughs> Let's see. So uh, it's it's going to be incredibly difficult for Jesse to claw her way back in the game, but we, we could see one of those rare games where there just isn't an Omnath in the top 30, 40 cards and with some Bowmaster triggers... I thought that we're going to get too many of them here. Um, nope. Going to meet a bolt. Yeah, Nathan's life total could potentially get whittled down. Another now, ring is the pickup. I, I think both you and Jesse boarded your lightning bolts out against Omnath. I just, I just wonder, should you be keeping them in? It feels like so many of these games just come down to, I'm so behind on cards, I just have to get that life total to zero. Is there any merit in having what is like mostly just a lava spike in your deck post board in this matchup? Honestly, I've been thinking about that too, and it might not be the worst call. It's like boarding out some sort of maybe removal spell, some sort of reactive card, and just bringing in some more proactive cards because you have to get them dead. You're never winning the late game. Yeah, I'm thinking like three terminates is too many. Like it mostly only lines up well against Omnath and Fury also can clean up an Omnath too, but you definitely have a lot more experience with the archetype than I do. I think it's close because sometimes the bolt will just line up so poorly against Omnath. You're like, I wish this was a Terminate yeah. instead so I could actually kill the Omnath. But if they never draw Omnath, the bolt looks mighty appealing. That's true. And Nathan has, has done a really poor... Oh, that's not true. It's funny. Nathan in games one and three of this match has been dying to draw an Omnath, uh, having tons of cards, tons of resources, no Omnath. In game two, where he only had two lands, had all four Omnaths <laughs> and, and no, no way to cast them. Until the, the Blood Moon came down, it was too late. See Dothy Voidwalker come out. Uh I believe Nathan's got ring protection, so passing of the turn, no damage. Draw two. There's Another a bean. bean. You know, these kind of game, these kind of games where like you know Jesse's so behind, has to get you know four for one. I I'm always rooting for the underdog here to make some kind of crazy comeback. And you know, this is this is you know, Nathan has eight cards in his hand right now. One of them is relevant. <laughs> One, like, the Celestial Purge is really the only relevant piece of uh, action here. As you mentioned earlier, these four-color decks can easily flood out in the mid to late game where they're, it looks like they're in an overwhelming position when in reality they're sitting there with five, six lands in hand. They're just like, I wish I could draw an Omnath. I wish I could draw an Omnath. I can't get rid of my ring. I'm going to die to it. <laughs> like yeah, there, these there's, games. There's a pretty realistic action. situation where... Nathan uses the Celestial Purge on the Voidwalker because he's worried about either Jesse casting a ring or Jesse uh, getting too much damage in. And then the Fury is just, and it, it you know, has eight damage, and then Nathan draws the three more lands, and it, the, the game is over. Yeah, I mean, that is a very real possibility of how this game just ends is the third evoked Fury here just closing it out. Is it second or third? I believe it, it might be I second. I believe this is the third. Um now there's the third land here, and it's got to be so tempting to slam, to slam Fable and get rid of two of these Evoke spells. It has to be like, it's it's basically impossible to read that Nathan just has nothing. Um, but it, it just ends up in a playing playing the Fable instead of evoking the Fury, which, you know, who can, who can blame her? Yeah, if I sat there across from Nathan and Nathan had five cards in hand, I'd be slamming the Fable the same way. Knowing yeah. what we know, the Fury is such an appealing line here, but... 
Oh, Fury of Nathan's own. Yeah, that would have you know totally cleaned things up, of course. See one card off the screen, but it looks like a, maybe a multicolor card or land. It might be an Omnath. It is not. That's an Omnath, and I, I I think with that ETB trigger, Omnath is also bringing the end of this game. Four mana, Rainbow Jelly Bean, ETB Shake My Hand. Yeah. Certainly, like one of like the last Bastion of like well, maybe not the last Bastion, but there was like I don't I don't know how much modern you're playing in like the post. Uh, Eldraine, the original Eldraine era, but there's just like so many like Omnath piles that like Omnath Fields of the Dead, Once Upon a Time, Mystic Sanctuary, and like this like whole engine of like crazy over the top mid range was like so so overpowering. And a lot of those elements left, but Omnath has stayed with us all these years. Hear me out, Spike. The best answer to the One Ring, Oko. Thoughts? Hmm. Well, the, the problem is, like, every ring deck is going to play for Oko also. <laughs> I don't know how that, interesting those mirrors would be. They might, they, may, they might be kind of fun. I've heard that argument come up multiple times recently, and I was like, what? what it, they're just going to play both. They're going to yeah, Oko their ring when it's about to kill them. Yeah, it's kind of like the... I'm, I'm usually not a big believer in the philosophy that we have to, like, release the supervillain onto metropolis to fight the other supervillain you know what i mean like i, I don't think that death Red shaman being unbanned is a particularly good you know counter to anything <laughs> i don't think oko being unbanned is a, is a super reasonable decision I, I think for the most part i like to be a little bit more safe in my ban unbanned philosophies look i'll I, take I, another I, mana dork that doesn't die to bowmaster red and six yeah Keep that would be Red nice. shaman I mean, I would like for Wizards to unban my favorite cards and then ban my least favorite cards. I, I think that that would, you know, typically be a good change by them. We should just unban ban discourse. Yeah. That, That'd probably maybe, be the best thing to do at this point. Maybe. <laughs> well, Spike, I think this game, not to call it too soon. I'm going to call it. It's over. You're going to call it? All right. Yeah. I didn't want to say it. I don't know. Like, I think there needs to be a new meta for, like, magic commentary. Can we just stop pretending like the game's not over, at, you know, at this point? <laughs> like, like there was, like, you know, Jesse, well, Jesse was still, like, 2 or 3%, you know. We were a bit – we're giving her the chance. But it, it is it is over, uh, like, I think, like, actual 0% from this point. Let's start a new era of commentary called Keeping It Real. Well, yeah, we don't I, try to be like, ah, Jesse's still got that one percent chance to top deck <laughs> this and that, and uh, no, she she's dead. Yeah, I would love to eat my words here, like you know, I, I it would be a very funny moment, but it's it's okay. It's, we, we can all just collectively sigh and make you know admit that it's over <sighs> when it's over. Nathan could concede. Yeah, maybe like the meteorite hits Nathan's uh, router and then he loses internet. And then Jesse wins by default. You're right, yeah, Jet. That, yeah. that, that's true. Um, there's um, apparently, I, I heard like, I don't know if this is true, but there was a solar flare that caused a glitch for a Mario 64 speedrunner that allowed him to perform a glitch that was either like not able to be replicated or is only able to be replicated after that or something. So we, we, yeah, we could see a similar situation. I hope so. Yeah. Speedrun, MTGO, out of bounds, any percent? <laughs> yeah you are the preeminent mtgo speedrun expert i think i think we may see yet again thoughtsies concede probably i would con i would have packed it i mean to some extent ago. jesse just has you me and all of our wonderful viewers held hostage here you know that kind of power can be intoxicating since she thought sees this herself <laughs> yeah there we go and then packs it in, packs it up, and so, the Nathan advances into top eight.